they're also really colorful too. So they're, they're like inviting they are. you to I click mean, on them. The, the magpie in you really just wants to click on one of those. <laughs> yeah. All right. Welcome everybody to another episode of Aston Praxis. It's January 24th. The gang should be all here, I believe. Uh, I think we've got everybody. Yep. And today we're going to talk about page templates, which is uh, almost our last view of templates. Uh, we're going to talk about what is a template again, just to reset for anyone who was not on our previous episodes. We're going to talk about ways to implement a Microsoft 365 template, page templates then. We're going to talk about out of the box, save templates, apps, creating a new template. We're going to then delve into a certain kind of template, which is a news template, uh, emailing those news templates, and then automation, which is Todd and I's favorite topic, will be at the end, and hopefully we won't have enough time for Todd, because that's always our goal. All right, Mark, reiterate for these fine folks what, is what a, a template, template is. Yeah, I think, I think it actually came from the carpentry um originally but it's it's a pattern or a mold or something that you use so that you can reproduce the same thing over and over and over again so we use templates all the time we just uh don't necessarily have physical things that we start with templates give us a starting point that's very helpful and in fact why do we do it see there's one right there that carpentry template so what what is if you're if you're making the same thing over and over again you want to you want to be able to do it as quickly and as easily as possible and you want it to be the same every time so that that that's what a template helps give you and it, it makes it consistent so you know if it's five inches wide it's always going to be five inches wide same thing with with a sharepoint template um whether it's a page template a site template a list template it's giving you the same thing that you would expect to get and it's a way to encapsulate institutional knowledge. If you've already created a bunch of these things, even if you've done them manually by taking 10 steps to do it each time, you, you are evolving that thinking over time. You know, maybe you add an 11th step at some point, maybe you add a 12th step at some point. Well, that, that by, by adapting your template, you can adapt that inst or encapsulate that institutional knowledge. Templates are usually, almost always, and certainly in the Microsoft 365 world, applied at the beginning of something and usually aren't applied afterwards. Site templates, for example, you could apply, there are something like 10 site templates now. You could apply them all to a site and you'd end up with this sort of mess because, you know, it, they all do something slightly different. So typically what you do is when you create a new thing, you pick what template you want, want to use and then you stick with that going forward. Though there are some great, great use cases for applying templates um, progressively, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. If the template changes after you've used it, you don't get those changes. It's that starting point. It's not a connection back to the template. It's not uh, sort of a living template that is then linked to the object that you've created. Awesome. Well, thank you for resetting us all on that. And so today's topic is page to uh, templates. So talk to us more about those. Oh, you want me to talk some more? OK, I do. I, I'm going right. to let you keep so, talking, actually, until I cut you off. <laughs> page <laughs> templates are created in a site. They actually end up in the templates folder in the site pages library. It, believe, you know, there's there's nothing fantastically strange about them. They're actually ASPX pages that just happen to end up in that library and they get registered as a template. You create them through the UI and I'll show you on the next slide. But um, they are site by site. So for example, if you wanted to have a, a, uh, a news template that you wanted to use in every site on your intranet, you can't do that through the UI. You would have to clone that, that template page and roll it out using usually using I don't know Todd what would we use maybe the Microsoft 365 CLI for example no, or PowerShell <laughs> Mark PowerShell to, to roll it out across the different sites so so I there really are sort all. of an isolated thing but if you think about it generally like if you have an HR site versus a marketing site they're not typically going to use the same template so that model isn't as bad as it sounds next slide 
So to create a page template, it's, it's very simple through the UI. Generally, I would suggest that you create a page that actually has the content in it. Page, whether it's a news, news post page or a regular page, build one that has content in it. Maybe build a couple that have content in them so that you actually can sort of verify and test out that the way you're structuring that page is actually going to work. And then when you're editing the page, you have an option over on the upper left that you can see with the little red box about it around it, save as template. That will save it into that templates folder. If the folder's not there, it'll create it. Then um, from that, what, what you're doing effectively is cloning that page and putting a copy in the templates folder. And then that page is available as a template going forward. Like I said, I would always suggest using an existing page instead of trying to start from scratch, though you can create a new template from scratch if that's something that you feel comfortable doing. So once you have page templates, or, or this is this is how you can use them. So when you're when you're doing, you know, when you hit, uh, hit um, click the the plus sign and say new page, or you say page, the the screen shows you the three out of the box templates from Microsoft: the blank page, the visual page, the basic text. As far as I know, nobody uses visual and basic text. If any of you do, God bless you. Um, I don't find that they're all that helpful. I always like to start with a blank one because it's 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 helpful. But you can you can use any one of those three just out of the box, and it gives you that leg up. It's it's this is where we're starting from. the The next tab at the top of that page template dialog is saved on this site, and that will show you any templates that you have saved into that templates library. So in this example, we have one called New Hire Announcement. That's something that we've created in our own site. And you notice that when we select it, we get a nice little preview, which is, it's actually loading a view of that template right there in the page, probably in an iframe, right, Julie? Oh, um, it is. Yep. So, so we can see what it actually looks like so that we can pick the right one. And then the last, the last tab there is app pages. And maybe one of you- Yeah, I was, gonna, I was just gonna, I was just gonna jump in. I was just gonna jump Why in. Why don't you jump so in? These, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in. So this is for when you have built a custom SharePoint framework solution and you have tagged it in the configuration for that solution that it can be an app page. And so essentially it's a web part, but that is targeted to an app page, which means that it has sort of one that only your web part on a, a, a a headerless page and so you get that full page experience um and so the any apps that you have deployed any sharepoint framework custom apps that you have deployed that that had that tag in the manifest will show up in this apps area assuming they're installed in that site or they're tenant-wide deployed and so that's an example of what those look like and when you do click on those you get a little bit of a preview of what the uh, web part looks uh like in the page although it's not perfect because if the web part requires configuration to have a visualization as you pointed out it's an iframe and so it doesn't actually look exactly like it would look when it's all configured i think you can include uh, a image that you can have as the preview image if you want to but um you know in general that's how it works all right so templates for publishing in the publishing process I don't know where I, why you typed that that title. It makes sense, I guess. So, so this is um, if we've created a, a, a template for a news post. This is what it would look like in the in that news post publishing process. So we see the the, the custom template over there on the on the saved on this site template. We see the um, the um, thumbnail that that shows us whether or not we'd like to use it. It's a little redundant to the previous slide, so we'll just go through that really quick. Okay. Let's do that. So with news templates, there are a different set of uh, out of the box templates that that you see the the standard set that we, we see when we're creating just a regular page, but you also see made for email at the top. So if you're going to create a news post that you want then to email out, 
you can use one of those templates. And you notice there's a blank news template just that's very similar to blank standard template. The difference there, with the ones that have the little, little envelope for news, is they only allow you to use a limited set of web parts because they're going to go out in email. So you know some, some web parts wouldn't work in email. So for example, a document library uh, web part wouldn't, wouldn't travel well in email because it would have to point back to the original document library. So if you use one of those templates so that you can email out that news post, you will be limited in, in what you can add to it, but that and may not necessarily be a problem. It's just something to think about. And of course, they put them at the tops to confuse everyone. So yeah, you because click on it because it says course. blank, and you'd think you get the right thing, and it's, then you don't. It's because no somebody's bonus depends on you clicking on that. <laughs> the telemetry. Yeah. Whenever uh, you wonder why Microsoft did something, <laughs> follow the money. Are we follow saying the follow money. the money? Follow I think we're the saying money. follow the money. Yeah. Um, they're all. They're also really colorful too. So they're, right. they're like inviting they are. you to yeah, click I mean, on them. The, the magpie in you really just wants to click on one of those, doesn't yeah. it? it, it that is That's nice. going to be Volcanic Uncertainty's first album, The Magpie in Me. That's, uh... <laughs> um, Caleb mentioned that when you save, uh, publish a, a news article as a template and they're already published, that promoted state equals two thing, get saved with it. That's a really good tip, Caleb, because that would yep. bite you, I'm sure. Yeah, there, there are a couple of things with templates that don't work the way you'd expect them to. So, for example, if you have comments turned off on a page and you save it as a template, eh, so what? It's good. Those comments are going to be on whether you want them on or not. It's right. not perfect, and they don't seem to fix anything that we tell them is broken. Wow. Okay. I'm not harsh. Uh, no. Not salty no, at no. all. Not tell it, feeling a tell little it saucy like it is. today. It's yeah, reality. It's a fact. It's a bit saucy. All right, our newest Simpraxian, Patrick, you're going to help us walk through some use cases, yes? Yes, I am. Awesome. Show your face, Patrick. I'm here. He's here. He is. You know what? This is a new Teams feature. It is burying people. Patrick's all the way on page three. <laughs> Yeah, that's not Which I think it's just a lovely wah, feature. Wah, wah, he's wah, on teams. the front line for me right where I want him. I <laughs> he is right matter of fact, he's right next to me. He's right there. I could kiss him right on the cheek if I <laughs> I think he'd love that. All right, Patrick, tell us <laughs> about use cases. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay, so most organizations have monthly newsletters or things that get sent out on a, on a regularly basis, whether it's weekly, monthly, uh, quarterly, whatever that may be. So we wanted to call out a few specific use cases, uh, and then we'll show you some visuals of what that might look like. So yep. first is a company news post. So there are some news posts that you may want to be formatted consistently, whether that's like a weekly uh, recognition of an employee or uh, a new hire announcement or our third option, which is a, a monthly newsletter from the CEO. So for a new hire announcement, that might be one that you want to, to look consistent uh, so people always know what it is. Um, it helps organizations know about the new hires, but it also uh, can be spread across multiple departments. So it, might be used by human resources when there's a new hire, but it could also be used by each department. Yeah, so Again, it gives more... consistency, which is really yeah. helpful. Let's, uh, let me move on here. We've got some examples of each one of these and it's a little easier probably to talk to them, but um, essentially we're showing so, the company news post. Go ahead, sorry. So here's the company news post. Um, you can see that you've got a spot for the main story. Uh, an optional image to go with it. So if this is like the qu quarterly earnings, then you have that set up. So you can just pop in the image and put in the text and you're set to go. Yeah, so it gives the people that are putting this together a way to easily know exactly what they're supposed to put on the page so that they look consistent all the time. So that's super helpful. I love this one. This one's pretty. Here's your new hire announcement. Mark was just saying he doesn't like using the visual layout for pages, but 
here we have it, um, <laughs> provides a little bit more of a visual interest, uh, a bigger image there. But you can see again, we have an introduction um, and then a few tidbits about the person, whether it's favorite food or hobbies. Um, those can obviously be switched out too. So if you wanted to include something different than a favorite food one month, you could obviously switch that out. Right, so that that green box that's in that header just can have text in it though, right? Like we can't right. put like the person's photo in there. Although I suppose you could put the person's photo as that the whole page image, it would look absolutely ridiculous because it would be like, ah. yeah. Yeah, one of the things you, you went, that, uh, person's picture doesn't tend to fit, you know, the aspect ratio is wrong, but what you, you can do is change the thumbnail in the page properties to be oh. the, the face so that it shows up in various places, but the header is consistent. You know, this could be the new hire announcement header, but you put the picture in, in the page. I was gonna say the way I've done it before is a consistent image kind of setup like this, but that is one of the features on the page is, you know, a, a picture box. So you can just upload their, their lovely photo from their ID badge or whatever the case may be right. uh, to put it there. Oh, nice. And so then it's again, consistent. I know we Correct. just talked to uh, uh, a client about doing this very thing. And one of the things we talked about is that when different people do different new hire announcements, some people have like the photo that's like this size of the entire page and put like 10 paragraphs of things and other people get like a tiny little photo that's like half blurry and like one sentence. And so it just kind of changes the, the vibe for you know, oh, I got the crappy new hire announcement. You got the nice one. It's kind of like getting your favorite teacher in grade school. You got Mrs. Miller. Lucky you. All right. You had Mrs. Uh, Miller? Oh, she was the my best. son actually has Mrs. Miller. So CEO corner, other, any so, guidelines we want to say? Yeah, so CEO corner, CEOs are busy. Um, obviously, newsletters are an important way to communicate out to the entire organization. Um, the nice thing about this is you can highlight certain sections so the CEO can get in there and know exactly what they need to update. Uh, any of the other information can be updated by the assistant or anything like that, uh, as long as they save it as draft and don't publish it. <laughs> right. um, but you can and see that it's... Yeah, this this is uh, Mark Christian Chrisman asked the question of you know how important is it to name elements or otherwise delineate things in the template, and I think this is a a good example of a way to do that. You know, you can highlight stuff, you can put things in brackets that you expect people to fill in. That's also even. Go ahead. Even when I'm building a page, I'll do that. Like if I'm working with the department. I have a specific way of dealing with them to let them know that this is not final. This is a question for you. Right, right. And using the highlighting, we we would do that a lot too. Yeah. Uh, Caleb had a good comment about uh, using presetting the content type for the page template so that some of the metadata and the content type was already preset in the template, and that helps where you're saying, okay, go create a new one. And the template already has a lot of that set. So you know that it's getting at least mostly set properly. And hopefully if there's anything they need to change, it's, you know, they can be trained on that, but at least you're getting some of the basics right to begin with, which is, which is super handy. All right, uh, Derek, what's some limitations, my friend? Yep, well, we've already talked a little bit about some of them, but, um, and so while page limits are great, there, there are some pros and cons. The first, and Mark talked about this, they are only available in the site collection you create them in. So like you said, if you need something that a new, a corporate news that goes across, you do need to, you do need to push that out. Um, I did have one client that had this need where they had a centralized location and I wrote a logic app I gave them a button to push on a page and I wrote a logic app that published it out to all the sites. Um, but by default, they don't go cross site collection. The other point, and again, this was what Caleb said, if the site pages have metadata to them, so promoted state being two, meaning it's been published or something very basic like, uh, you know, a custom date field, those values stay and are stuck 
at the point that you created the template. So if you have something like a custom date or a yes, no field that you need users to select, you're probably better off um, saving the template with those values as blank prior to publishing as a template because the values will stick. Um, you, and then the other thing is you can't publish things with it. So obviously you can't publish a document library. You can't replicate permissions. You can't do flows with it or list formatting. Not that you would, um, but the good news is, is that this requires no code to do. So any user that has edit access to the site can create a page template. Um, I included the rest of these templating options down below because um, it's going to tee up Julie and Todd to talk about automation. Um, not Todd. But, or sorry. Todd's not going to talk. Todd's I am, not I'm talking so about anything. I have so many things to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's so quiet. But all of these other options to do more robust templating around page templates or site templates, um, you really need a third party tool or you need to do some custom coding, which requires a Pages API. And that's something that Julie is going to talk about right now. No, Pages API exists. <laughs> Still? Ooh. I always what? say no, it, and I'm always I had no it. idea. Yeah. They announced that <laughs> yeah, it's coming yesterday. They, yeah. So is Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Probably yes. sooner than the, the March promise date. It's, yeah, did they say which March? Because, you know, March could be. <laughs> there are many I think marches. it's a death March. That's yes. what they're talking about. Yeah, so, I mean, right. It, they've been talking about it. It's been promised for quite a long time. Uh, it doesn't exist yet. Uh, we'll see how robust it is when it does get here. Uh, essentially, though, if you're thinking to yourself, but wait, we have all these great third party tools and, and things to create and replicate pages. Well, that's because, uh, you know, the power of community being what it is and, and the Sympraxians, uh, as you all who are regulars know, love the power of community, did a lot of reverse engineering. So a bunch of the PNP resources, PNP PowerShell, the Microsoft 365 CLI, PNP Framework, which is a set of .NET uh, libraries, and PNP JS, which I am a co-maintainer of, which is your JavaScript uh, libraries, all implemented their own reverse engineered version of the first party APIs. Those are not fully supported by Microsoft. So you can use them and it gets what's what you need done done, but they are not um, they are not officially supported by Microsoft. And so then these other third party tools like Orchestry and Sharegate essentially are doing the same thing. They have reverse engineered versions of the first party APIs. And so Granted, they're you know both those third-party um, options spend an inordinate amount of time staying on top of anything that changes in those APIs because of course Microsoft can change them at any time that they want to without notifying anyone because they're not meant to be public. Um, so you know those organizations have to to really stay on top of any kind of change that they see happening. I'm assuming they probably have some unit testing and automation going on to to, to see when things are changing. Uh, but it it's a tricky balance, and you know we know we need them. So we're so happy and grateful that um, these various teams did that work. But it is something that Microsoft has been dragging their feet on for quite some time, and and hopefully. It will get uh, completely implemented to the level that it's already reverse engineered, and we will be able to move forward with some first party API soon. And well, darn pages it, aren't I all that left. important, are they? I mean, does anybody Mark, use could those? Talk, could you just talk for seven more minutes so there'd be no time for Todd? <laughs> I'm going to provide was, value to someone. I was just going to, I was going to jump in with a few more thoughts, but no. Yes, perhaps a tale of vacation. Uh, so, um, so one of, one of the things I want to mention is as a as a scripter, I never really think about APIs much. They're kind of just there, and I use them as people blurt them out. But Mark has mentioned a lot of times that APIs are like a like a contract, and it's a contract between us and Microsoft. And and Microsoft fulfills their part by providing the API, and we provide our part by not poking in the cracks to see what else we can do. They have not done that with the Pages API, which is why we've had to do all these uh, horrible things. And they kind of fight back. Um, but there are some ways around it. And like Julie said, the communities do talk to each other. And so like the PNP PowerShell, the, the best command line interface, they definitely talk to the M365 folks. And they, you know, as one team figures something out, they share it with the other team. And, and that works pretty well. So I've had to do some stuff with this. And in the chat, 
uh, Carol asked about the promoted sp uh, state thing. So we've talked about that a couple times. That isn't specifically a page templating thing, but I want to mention it. So we, we kind of mentioned that promoted state is whether that news article is published or not. You can't change that in the UI. It's read only in the UI. You can see what it is, but you can't change it. You can change it with PowerShell, but it's just like a regular list item thing. And I'll find, I'll, uh, check out with Carol later on, but basically it's just a property of that page. You can set it with PowerShell, write it back, and then you can change the promoted state. Um, as there with is any... a trick, there is a trick trick to change the promoted state. In the UI. You can oh, save there... the, you can take a, create a copy of that page, save it, but don't, don't publish it and then delete the old page. Not the oh. same thing, not yeah. the same thing, but if you're desperate and you don't have a Todd around. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and we all should have those. Um, so with anything like this, if I'm trying to do a new thing uh, with something, I, I always do get command to try to figure out what the, the geniuses at PNP have figured out. This one's kind of tricky because you need to have the page commandlets. So it's, you know, add, remove, and all that. But then there's also the client side commandlets. And the difference is the client side ones are for the modern pages. So it's client side components, client side pieces, things like that. So that will show you the different things you can do. And I've got a really small screenshot of what I didn't want to shrink the text window to throw off that command, but there's a screenshot of the page things and it's the typical things that you're thinking of add web parts and all that one thing to keep track of though is some of these page commands work with classic pages and some work with the modern pages so make sure you know which you're doing and if something doesn't work you know figure out what it is um and if you're desperate and don't have a Todd around, uh, you can use the M365, uh, wh whatever that is package. And that's under the SPO page. And they've got a, they've got six or seven uh, commands underneath there that you can use. The CLI for Microsoft 365. <laughs> yes, yes, the M365 CLI. I knew it had a name, it's something. Uh, but they both work really <sighs> well. And I, I, I've done a bunch of projects with customers. So like Carol's deal, I had a, a client a couple of years ago that had, they were moving some things over. The promoted state was wrong between different environments and they had thousands of pages that we needed to change. Uh, so I was able to do the promoted state easily with PowerShell. And then we also had to jigger some pages around because of different templates. One, one company had one template, one had another one. So I was able to use PowerShell to, to move the components around. Worked pretty well. You can that share that one. too, I right? That. You can share mm -hmm. the promoted state too, right? Probably that sounds like something they do. Because you can yeah. export it. If you create a view, you can export the metadata and then change it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You could do it that way, yeah. Because it so is it's yeah, the metadata that. value, like title, whatever. Eric, I've, I've why would, why would Todd that. use ShareGate if he can do PowerShell? Yeah. Well, why would I spend Todd, two minutes Todd doing it in wouldn't. ShareGate? <laughs> <laughs> Derek, I've recently seen issues with that, though, um, where. Oh. Okay. After after share gating, uh, the uh, some of the the HTML content of the page broke, and so the uh, the page didn't come back the way that it started when I exported. Probably one well, of those think, temporary. So I things. think that's two different things. You're talking about moving the page and the page not being. No, I'm talking about the bulk export, doing the bulk export that Derek was just ah. talking about and changing the yeah. promoted state to zero. Um, so I just recently had an instance huh. where I tried to do that. I've seen it work before, huh. weeks weeks ago, but this week I did it for a page that somebody inadvertently promoted. Um, just set it to zero, saved it back, and it it broke the uh, the HTML of the page um, to the point that only the title was showing, none of the body was it was there, and we hmm. couldn't even get the edit button. And so I had to revert the version, copy it to a different site without using, without bringing over the property promoted state and then copy it back in over top of the one that was there to to get the promoted state back to zero. It was, speaking well, of thank hacks. God you were there to fix it after you broke it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's that the other professional yeah. role, right? <laughs> well, I think that yeah. goes back to the statement of they're all relying on reverse engineered APIs and have to keep watching for things to change. So that can be tricky. Um. In the in lieu of time almost being up, we have some links for all of you for some script samples and um, <clears throat> modern pages in SharePoint and page templates in SharePoint and some links to some of the former Ask and Praxis episodes on this very topic. And with that, we come sort of to the end here. Uh, so. 
February 7th is our last hurrah on templates. We're going to do site and list templates in combination with each other. Uh, we have some live things going on uh, next week. Uh, Microsoft 365 Community Day is Miami, and Derek and Mark will be down there uh, cheering Emily on for her uh, for her event. And then I will be at the North American Cloud and Collaboration Summit in Dallas in April, and then again at the Microsoft 365 Conference, and then again at European Collaboration Summit, where Derek is also going to be there. Uh, and so we will see you out and about since it is conference season. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us once again for Aston Praxis. We absolutely look forward to seeing you again for our next episode when we talk about site and list templates. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us this week on Aston Praxis. We love getting your questions or session ideas you can submit by using the link in about. If you find this helpful, hit that like or subscribe button and share this content with your colleagues.